from Los Angeles. It's the Tom Mikey Show. Tasty. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Mikey. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Mikey Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800. 866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. Listen to this story. Have you uh, seen this commercial? The story is um, from the Chicago Sun Times. But you may have seen the commercial already. Bob Dylan appears in a new series of commercials for Victoria's Secret. His grizzled face intercut with shots of model Adriana Lima cavorting through Venice in a bra, patties, and spiked heels. Sounds good to you realize you have to look at the face of Bob Dylan while you look at that. Yeah, I know. Says here, don't worry, the 62-year-old Dylan keeps his clothes on. Dylan's song, Love Sick, from his Grammy-winning 1997 album, Time Out of Mind. You own that, don't you? That's a CD, and yeah, that's on your rack, isn't it? Sure it is. <laughs> um, it provides the musical backdrop for the spot, which airs in 15, 30, and 60-second versions. It promotes a new line of lingerie, the Angels Collection which explains the wings on Lima's back as she prances across a palazzo near a Venetian canal. It's weird, said New York relic, I mean disc jockey, uh, Dennis Elsis, who's played Dylan music for three decades. He's got to be older than Dylan, for God's sake. He says, is he on a station now playing music? I'll bet he's sitting in his apartment playing music. That's what he's doing. Back announcing. I don't, I don't think he's actually on a station, is he? Come on. Dennis Elsis was on the radio when I was a kid. Got to be kidding me. He says, I would be hesitant to say it's awful or wonderful. It's just strange. The commercials began airing a week ago and will run for the next two weeks, said Ed Razik, chief creative officer for Victoria's Secret. The company experienced an immediate uptick in sales once the spots ran, he said. Dylan was not a hard sell when approached about the campaign, Razik said. The company had already decided to use the song when its corporate boss, Les Wexner, suggested inviting Dylan himself. The Rock and Roll Hall of Famer quickly agreed, although no one's quite sure why. No one's quite sure why Bob Dylan agreed to appear in the commercial? I'll tell you why he agreed to appear in the commercial. Please. What are you talking about? Why did he agree to appear? Why else? Razak said, I can't speculate to his reasons. I never talked to him about why he decided to come to the party, but he did. He's iconic, a living legend. Dylan's spokesman did not return messages for comment. It's the first time in his 40-plus years as an international star. Has he been a star all that time? Name the last Bob Dylan song you can remember. Name the last Bob Dylan CD you bought, if ever. I mean, come on. Maybe he was a star 40 years ago. But is he really a star now? Really? Really? Come on! First time that Dylan has appeared in an ad campaign, although his song, The Times They Are a Changin', was used in a Bank of Montreal commercial in 1996. <laughs> Back then, Dylan was ripped for selling out. What does that mean? What does that mean? I don't understand. He was selling out. 
there's more here. It says here his association with ladies in lingerie, as opposed to some corporate entity, failed to produce much antipathy, particularly in an era where Led Zeppelin, Peter Gabriel, and Sting recently licensed songs for commercials. But this strange mingling of Dylan and D cups prompted plenty of comment, from a New York sports writer's Sunday column to various internet chat rooms. One Dylan fan in a chat room chat room wrote, "On first glance, this is wrong on so many levels. Why?" But after viewing it, he said, I really admire Bob Dylan. I only hope that when I reach Dylan's age, someone approaches me to ask if I would like to be paid to fly to Venice and do a commercial with several supermodels. Now, this is the thing I don't understand when people talk about people of uh, rock selling out. They're selling out. Bob Dylan sold out by being in a Victoria's Secret commercial, by letting his songs be used in advertising. Led Zeppelin sold out. When they're uh, one of their songs used in a Cadillac commercial. I'm getting so tired of this stuff. Peter Gabriel, how many of his songs have been in commercials? Please. Sold out. You know, and then uh, all the people who admired the Beatles for not letting their music be used in uh, commercials, because that would be selling out. Come on. This stuff is stupid, stupid, stupid. May I remind you that the vast majority of very successful rock stars uh, began by playing in small clubs in front of small audiences, trying to get noticed by big record companies. For example, Bob Dylan used to play coffee houses in Greenwich Village in the 60s and was discovered by that little independent record company called Columbia Records. He signed a big contract to make albums for one of the biggest record companies of its time. In the 70s, Bob Dylan made so much money, he bought a big house in Malibu. Bob Dylan has been selling out from the beginning. In fact, that's what rock stars do. They make disposable, marketable art, and they sell it. They sell it to you in the form of concert tickets. They sell it to you in the form of T-shirts. They sell it to you in the form of CDs, cassettes, DVDs, and all the other crap they sell. If you are a rock star, by definition, you have sold out. You're not playing the subway entrances anymore. You're not playing on the sidewalk anymore. You're not playing at the protest concerts anymore. You're playing for big crowds. You're selling lots of stuff at very high prices. How can you say that Bob Dylan sold out? Bob Dylan has been a sellout forever. And by the way, when I call him a sellout, I'm not criticizing him. What I'm criticizing are the naive morons who think rock music somehow is sacred and that anybody who licenses their music for use in a commercial or a newspaper ad or a, 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 a radio commercial, whatever, that they've sold out. This is all they do is sell you stuff. This is all they're doing is selling stuff to big companies. This is what they do. You can name any band, and I'll tell you how they sold out. Nirvana, sold out. How big a record deal do you think they had when they, when they made their deal in the early 90s to make records? Sold out. By the way, was admission to a Nirvana concert free when you went? No. <laughs> Somebody got that money. Who was it? And again, remember, I'm not criticizing it. I'm criticizing you for thinking that bands somehow are sacred and that uh, there are ways of going commercial and selling out. They, from day one, their souls are for sale. From day one, every band you've ever heard of, I'm talking about the ones you've heard of, not the ones that nobody's heard of. Every band you've ever heard of from day one had a price tag around their neck. They had a for sale sign at their front door. They were trying to sell themselves to record companies, sell themselves to agents, managers, promoters, you name it, merchandisers. This is what they do. For all the talk about oh, the deadheads and how peaceful they were and how nobody cared about money, Jerry Garcia made a fortune before he died. So much so, people were fighting over all the money he made. Everybody in that business sells out. That's what they do. And again, this is not criticism. Can I tell you something? 
Somebody's paying me a lot of money to give you this speech right now. You know why? Because I'm available to the highest bidder. Rappers are up front about it, Gary. You're absolutely right. Now they're working product placement in the hip-hop songs, all these references to Cuvassier and other products that are being put in there for merchandising purposes. You know what? That, 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 you're right. They're, at least they're honest about it. This idea that uh, the certain rock stars are above reproach and are not sellouts, you've got to be kidding me. You've got to be kidding me. They're in business. They make art that is made to be sold to you. If you don't believe that, look at all the squealing when Napster came out and people wanted to hear the music and they wanted to download songs. These people are not in the charity business. They want you to pay every time you hear them. They want you to pay every time you see them. They want you to pay to watch them on HBO or any other entity. They want your money. How stupid are you to think that some of them cannot be bought? They've all been bought, every one of them. That's how you've heard of them. The ones you've heard of worked for big record companies. They sign contracts. They sign away their rights. They take money in exchange for the record company, putting them on tours, buying them outfits, buying them music videos, buying them instruments, uh, paying their way into big arenas so they make big appearances and charge you 70 or 80 bucks to come see them. Where do you get this idea that bands haven't sold out? you got to be kidding me. Jesus Christ, you're nuts. You're, you're insane. Uh, Bob Dylan sold out. Yeah, all those years of being, uh, you know, kind of a charitable venture. Bob Dylan finally sells out to Victoria's Secret. Give me a break. How stupid are you to believe that? Huh? Tom, like it. Tom, like it. 100, 100, Tom, Tom, Tom. You sound like such a real nice guy. I am anything but a nice guy. The Tom Likey Show. Tom Likey Tom Likey Show. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's John on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing, buddy? Hi, right, John. Good. Uh, I just wanted to call and say that I totally agree with you. Um, uh, as far as the whole uh, holier than thou and if you sell out, you're doing good and whatnot. I'm in a band here in Los Angeles, and we just got our show, uh, a song of ours, landed on a TV show that's actually playing tonight. It's called One Tree Hill is the name of the show, and the name of our song is Slam. And it's like we are so amped as a band because that's just going to catapult us into that. Hopefully catapult that's, us. That's your that. dream. When you form a band, that's your dream. You ain't joking. It's like if you're not if you're not selling what you have, then you're falling out of the picture and nobody's going to know who you are. And who cares if you're in your garage in the, in the back practicing and you have the best song in the world. If nobody hears it, it's nothing. That's right. And it's like, uh, I mean, we've been playing for four years, and this is the biggest thing. The name of our band is Midnight to Twelve. And it's just, it's the biggest and best thing that's happened to us so far. And we look forward to what other opportunities it will bring. So it's just. That's why you got into this business. That and getting girls. Yeah. That's <laughs> You're it. Angry. You're exactly right. It's like I didn't get into it to sit in a garage with four other guys for four years of my life and want to do it for four more. Or to have people be... talking about you on some obscure chat room on the Internet. Exactly. We want to be out there on the road doing what we do best, which is play music and in front of big crowds. You you don't want to play you don't want to play at uh, you don't play at the Roxy. You want to play at Staples Center. Exactly, Moon though, Tom. And that's that's where we're heading and it's like we can't get there without other mediums such as T V and radio and other things and it's just the biggest and best thing so far for us and we look forward to and it. And if Victoria's Secret offered you a hundred thousand dollars to use your song in a commercial, would you say no? I would do it for 50000 Tom. <laughs> Without question. Where do these idiots get this idea? I don't get it. I don't either. I think it's just that whole that whole kind of underground. It's like all these bands try to make it, and once they make it, their fan base falls off because, like you said, they, they think they sold out. It's just ridiculous. Completely if you're, stupid. If you're, exactly. If your fans are fans, they're going to be with you whether you're garage or or on in staple center if it's good it's good that's that and our fans are great tom let me tell you they listen to you all the time and they absolutely love it well thank you john i appreciate the call can i, can I give a quick plug for our website <laughs> go ahead all right thanks buddy website is m212 um and the name of the band once again is midnight to 12 m212.com i appreciate it tom blow me up here you go baby 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Nick on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. 
Hey, Tom. Nick. I gotta tell you, I, I work for one of the top three record companies in the country. It's the music business. That's what it is. That's what it always was. I mean, rock and roll was essentially invented by a record company. Absolutely. I, we, you know, we, I don't think people realize the amount of money that is put into a band to fund videos, marketing, radio advertising, styling, tour support, all this nonsense. You're in the business to make money. Anything we can do to promote a record, we're going for it. And this goes all the way back to the days of Bill Haley and the Comets. Elvis Presley, you can't say Elvis Presley's name without hearing about Sun Records. I mean, it, it's all about money, and it always has been. Absolutely. We're, we're, we're in the business to sell records. That's, That's right. what we do. That's right. Excellent topic, Tom. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Nick. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. John on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How you doing, Tom? I'm doing okay. Great. I just wanted to say I totally agree with you and that even these big bands that try and make it like they're low-key and play small venues are still selling out and breaking in all kinds of money from that. Mm -hmm. No doubt about it. And, and that, you know, like Pearl Jam doing their... Um, don't go through Ticketmaster. They're, they're sellouts just like everybody else. Well, you know what? Why doesn't uh, Pearl Jam give free concerts? Yeah, exactly. If they, if they don't want Ticketmaster to get that $7 sur surcharge. Why don't they let you download every CD on the Internet for free? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I agree totally with you, Thomas. Good topic. Blow me up. Here you go, John. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Dan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, hello, Tom. Hello, Dan. What's happening, my man? Not nearly enough, pal. Hey, I got a question for you, man. Do you think that after bands hit a certain amount of success and fame and fortune, they should have, like, a salary cap? Cause no. Because it seems like these no. guys are making so much, they're just flaunting it around. So what? No one's forcing you to buy their record to go to their concerts. You know what? Yeah, I got no problem with That's the, the salary problem. cap. If people get fed up with it, they'll stop going, and then they won't make any money anymore. I can see that, man, but I, I, maybe it's just me. You know, it's like I know a bunch of musicians I'm, it, around the L.A. scene. I'm not one of them, but I know there's a bunch of guys that really bust their rump day in. And, and it doesn't matter how much they bust their rump. They obviously don't have something the bands that are selling their records have. But, it, you know, it, it these are it's it's sour bad. grapes from a bunch of loser crybabies. Uh, and, by the way, I see them at, uh, I see them in L.A. all the time because every time I go to Ralph's and they say paper or plastic, I'm looking at another failed musician. I know it. Uh, I'll show you on that. Like, not everybody. Man, somebody should start a band called Paper or Plastic. That way, these guys, uh, you know, could start, you know, using the term that they're going to be using the rest of their lives. Yeah, I, I, I feel you on that, Tom. You know, I'd love to be driving by the Roxy and see a band called Paper or Plastic on the marquee. That would be kick, man, right there. It would, because that's, that's, that's where these really guys are going out. anyway. I'm getting so sick and tired of walking around L.A. with all these losers dressed in black who came to L.A. They still want to be Axl Rose or whatever was going on here 15 years ago. And then complaining that they work so hard and they don't make any money. You don't make money if you don't have talent. If you have talent, you make money. It's pretty simple. The Tom Likas Show. This is the Tom Likas Show. From Los Angeles. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number, Rebecca, on the Tom Likas Show. Hi, Tom. The reason bands don't want to be, um, they say, sold out is because they don't want to be associated with a certain product. It's not exactly selling out, but... Um, if you were a band and you had a certain image, would you want to, like, advertise tampons or, like, herpes cream or something like that? But for the most, for the most part, though, uh, these bands will sell to just about anybody else. And uh, there are people who think that Bob Dylan shouldn't be in a Victoria's Secret commercial. Why not? Yeah, well, maybe that's not, maybe that is part of his image. I mean, underwear, sexy women, maybe well, so. A 62-year-old but... guy who uh, looks like he hasn't taken a bath in a week? I don't think so. What, you think a 62-year-old guy doesn't like naked women? It, and I'm not talking about what he likes. I'm talking about I wouldn't associate him with naked women. And if I were a woman, like buying underwear, I'm a 21-year-old who goes to Victoria's Secret, seeing Bob Dylan in a commercial would not uh, encourage me to come into Victoria's Secret. 
Yeah, you have got a point there. I think someone like, maybe like Selma Hayek would make me go in the store rather than Bob Dylan. That's right. The selling, the selling out. Like Selma Hayek would make me want to go into the store. <laughs> and it would make me want to go in because she looks great. And right. I would think, well, hey, maybe I can look this good in it. But um, Of course you can't because you, know, you don't have her body. Who does? I, oh, I'm not far off. I'm not far off. Really? We'll have to get a look at that. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's all about what you want to be associated with. You don't want to. I mean, would you do an advert for cream that will. No, but you know what? Every, look, everybody, including myself, has limits to what we will advertise. But it's not so we're not perceived to be sellouts. I mean, uh, you know what? I'm available to the highest bidder. I will endorse all kinds of products, and I do. Uh, but there's only limited products, and usually the ones I won't uh, advertise are ones that I don't like. Or ones that uh, I could end up getting sued because the product makes promises I, I can't vouch for. Other than that, I'm available to the highest bidder. I'm in the advertising business. I'm proud of it. Doesn't that make you a sellout? They're selling I, I That's what I'm in the business of doing. That's my business. I, I read commercials. But then you're just a salesman. Uh, well, I'm a salesman, and I also create art, and the art uh, is what you're hearing now, and it uh, is designed to keep people listening so they hear the commercials I read. Okay, what about... That's what it is. I mean, why pretend it's something else? Okay, but what about being oversold? You know, if you see too much of a band, you get absolutely sick of them, and that can do the opposite effect. Well, you know, again, that's the job of the management of the band to make sure that doesn't happen. But, see, again, you're talking about the extreme cases. Uh, yeah. Under normal circumstances, bands want record contracts with big companies. They want to play big venues. And, uh, yes, uh, they want their songs used in movies and commercials and wherever else they can sell them. See, and there's nothing wrong with that. Do you think it's okay if they sell things they like, but they have to like it? It's a sellout if they sell If you're like smart and you're, you're a well-managed uh, uh, band, or uh, in my case, if you're well-managed by, uh, I have a manager, I have an agent. Uh, if you are well-managed, you will sell products that will be in keeping with what people believe is true about you. So you wouldn't hear me on the air uh, uh, telling people to uh, buy a $20,000 diamond ring for your sweetheart uh, to get yeah, engaged. Well, you won't hear that. Out. That would be a sellout. But, but, the, 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 but the point is, it's not a matter of whether I'd be a sellout or not. It's whether it's believable. It has nothing to do with principles. It has to do with doing things that are consistent <laughs> and that, that appear consistent to my target demographic. It is all about marketing and sales. Isn't that the same thing, selling something that you don't believe in just for the money? Or uh, well, it's it's not a matter of whether I believe it. It's a matter of whether you believe I believe in it. Mm. I mean, I certainly wouldn't buy a diamond ring if you were trying to sell it. Well, but that, that's my point. You wouldn't hear me trying to sell it. I don't think guys should buy diamond rings for their girlfriends, so you won't hear me advertising that, okay? Because it wouldn't be believable. If you hear yeah. me on the air talking about bitches and hoes and don't buy her a diamond ring, and then I took a break and you heard a commercial telling you to buy a $20,000 engagement ring, it wouldn't be believable. But, but it's you know, not because of any high-minded principle I have. It's simply because you have to do things that are believable. Have you ever been approached to do something like that? I've been approached to do all kinds of products and had to say no. But again, not because I don't want to be perceived as a seller. It's because you, you have no credibility in the ads you do. If you promote products that people know by listening, you don't believe it. But When he, but people hear me talking about a Lexus or they hear me on the air talking about uh, the other products that I sell here on the air, uh, they're all believable, all of them. Yeah. Yeah. And then there are products I talk about that I'm not paid to talk about, like TiVo. But so what if you get paid for it? Why not talk about diamond rings if you get paid for it? What the hell? Be the because, I, you see, I pride myself in when I read a commercial, the advertiser gets results. And so I don't believe the advertiser would get results if I read a commercial for something that in the context of the show, I said not to buy. Wow, you care about other people. No, no, I don't. The only people I care about are the, the people I serve, which are the advertisers. And I want them to get results because that's the business I'm in. It has nothing to do with being a good person. It is all business. Oh, I thought you were coming across as a nice guy. But... No, I'm not a nice guy. I'm in this business to make as much money as I can in as short a period of time as I can do it. Okay. And I will read commercials for things that people will believe in uh, because they listen to the show. They hear me say certain things on the air, and the stuff I'm selling is believable and it, in the context of the radio show. 
What if they offered you a million to sell a diamond ring? Guy, buy this diamond ring for no. your girlfriend. You wouldn't. No, but that. not out of principle. I know that that would go down in flames, and then uh, I, I would get uh, people would take shots at me, and uh, and ultimately the advertiser bad. would say, you know what, we we wasted this money because it would make you look bad. It would make me look bad, but it would make me look bad not in a sellout kind of a way. It would make me look bad in a failure kind of way, like I'm trying to sell something that nobody would believe I'm selling. But don't you think that's why brands say they say the word sell out because it'll just make them look a bit of an idiot? No, because the thing is, they'll sell anything as long as it. it in fact, many of them sell stuff that, the, that you wouldn't think they believe. Yeah, that's kind of horrible. Let me give you an example of. Now, this isn't a, necessarily one of the great bands of all time, but it's a song that has been used in one commercial after another. The song called That's What I Like About You by the Romantics. This song is always in a commercial at any given time. It's in some commercial. It's in a commercial on TV right now. It, it's on all the time. Now, the guy who wrote that song probably wasn't thinking of uh, Budweiser or whatever it was that it's been used. But but y you know what? Well, why shouldn't he sell that song to as many advertisers as will buy it? You don't think it makes him look a bit... Look Look a bit of an idiot if it's if it's selling. An something. idiot? Uh, I wish I was that stupid, sitting home with my career over twenty years ago and still getting paid for these commercials to run on TV. I hope I'm that stupid. Well, yeah, there is something to be said for that. I mean, you're gonna get residuals from it for a very forever, long time, yeah. forever, forever. Yeah. I guess there's a point in that, but how I how stupid is that? It's not stupid at all. But I wouldn't sell something I didn't like. I wouldn't promote myself. I'll tell you what, uh, he, the, the guy who wrote that song, I couldn't tell you his name, so we don't know whose uh, song it is or who's selling what. We don't know what he believes or doesn't believe. He sang one song that everybody remembers. So does it really matter what his principles are, what he believes in? The guy is a completely anonymous. Can you tell me the guy who wrote that song? No. Can anybody? Probably not. Yeah, that's the point, but you know the song. So does it really yeah. matter if the guy, if they use it, uh, if they use it in a hemorrhoid commercial, does it matter if the guy has hemorrhoids or not? Do we really care? But you associate it with By the that. way, do you see the people wanted to use Ring of Fire, the Johnny Cash song, in a hemorrhoid commercial? <laughs> that's and the, the, the Cash family stood up and said, oh, no. Why? <laughs> well, I Why guess they then? thought it would tarnish the song in some way. <laughs> but that's the thing, you, you associate it with, with the adverts. That's the problem, and well, then you have the idea of the advert in your head when you think about the song. Right. I mean, Ring of Fire, great, great song. I love it. But if it was in a hemorrhoid commercial, it would make it laughable. It would. It would indeed. So I guess that's what selling out is, isn't it? Well, no, but, but, no, but there is no such thing as selling out. You are selling everything you create to the highest bidder. And in the case of advertising, if you have a band and it, it gives interviews to Spin Magazine and it has opinions about things or to Vibe or wherever, you'll, then you, what you'll limit it to is products that you can believably sell. But it's all about commerce. It has nothing to do with principles at all. At all. Do you think? I don't know. Oh, uh, yeah, you know, Why is it the people who like music want to believe that these people have these high-minded principles? You've got to be kidding me. Yeah, but you want to believe that the rock stars are like something from another planet and they're really... You want to believe that, but they're just... But they don't have hemorrhoids. They're just salespeople like everybody else. What, are you kidding me? I know, but you get into the whole thing of it and you think that they're these great characters. You well, think you think, hemorrhoids. but there's a difference between what you think and what is. Okay. Yeah, that's what you like to believe. You like to believe that. You know, but I like to believe in Peter Pan. And you know what? Peter Pan's a peanut butter. There is no person named Peter Pan. People like to believe in Santa Claus. They like to believe yeah. that. Why don't you sit by your chimney and see if he shows up on December 24th? Oh, you're such a spoil sport. See that? You have to ruin it. And by the way, the likelihood that rock stars have principles is about as likely as Santa Claus showing up at my place this year. Well, yeah, I guess. I guess when it comes down to it, I mean, I have a band, and if it come, came down to selling something and making money and fame or not selling it, I guess I would do it. Of course you would do it. You need the money. And the exposure as well. Well, yeah, well, yeah, well again, if, if you're yeah. so high-minded and so principled, what do you need exposure for? You just stand there at a street corner and play, and maybe somebody will notice you. Nah, it doesn't work that way. Well, oh, well, it does. You'll never make any money, but at least you'll be principled. Well, I don't know. I don't know if principles... You create art anymore. to sell it. That is what you create it for. Whether you're uh, Salvador Dali or Vincent Van Gogh, you, you create art to sell it. Hmm... But you can't get by in this world with principles. You have to kind of have 
Uh, your principles, uh, you know where your principles uh, come into play with your friends, your family, people who know you. Yes. Uh, where your word means something. But, you know, if I'm standing on a stage in front of 18,000 people, I'm selling something. That's what I'm there to do. I'm selling. These are not close friends of mine. I'm selling. This show has two and a half, three million listeners. What do you think I'm here to do? I'm here to help you, to make your life better? No. I'm selling stuff. And I'm honest about it. I guess I can say that. That's what I'm here for. I still wouldn't. What do you think my motivation is to come in here day in and day out and talk to these morons? Because I'm doing a public service of some kind? They pay me a lot of money. And they pay me a lot of money because not only do we draw a large audience, we then take those audience numbers and convert them into cash. That's what we do. Your yeah, artists have a dream and have an idea and have. Uh, a they have dreams. They that. have dreams when they are naive children or teenagers, and then when they become adults, they realize just like you realize about Santa Claus, you realize the truth of the world, which is what you really want is to be a big star, to, because you want people to watch you, and when they watch you, it means ka-ching. That's what it means. I think when you start off, you stick to your principles, and when you realize that doesn't work, you'll do anything. Well, you, when, the, when you have to pay the rent, you realize yeah. that you have to do something. Or after you've stuck to your principles for a little while, you think, hell, this isn't working. Damn it, I'll just, you know, I'll do whatever. I'll do whatever they want well, to do. Just so my that's kids. right. That's exactly yeah. right. So all these people good. say that Bob Dylan sold out being in the Victoria's Secret commercial. Who cares? You know what? I, the, 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 Bob Dylan has been a sellout from day one. And, and, and I'm not criticizing him for it. Uh, you know what? He created uh, his art, such as it is. I'm not a big Bob Dylan fan, but many people are or were. Uh, you know what? It's God bless America. You know, he, uh, he created something, and there was a market for it, and he sold it to Columbia Records, and then he sold it to the highest bidder over and over and over again. Why not? Yeah, I guess if you keep going there, you can be overexposed, and then it'll have the, the opposite effect. People will get sick of you. You know, all these people talking about the Beatles and how they didn't sell out because they wouldn't let their songs be used in advertising. Who sold out more than the Beatles? Beatlemania was a phony concept created by their manager for a reason. And why do they make movies that they charge you to see? Why do they have concerts? Those weren't free concerts, were they? Does it annoy you, though, when you hear a song you like on the, on the TV advertising something dumb? Regardless. The fact is, and by the way, now that Beatles songs are used in advertising, it's because whoever owned the rights to those songs sold them to Michael Jackson, who licenses them out now. Yeah. And they and where do you think that money went? Yeah, well, he needs to. He's yeah, but wait a minute. Do you do you but wait a minute. Whoever owned the rights to John Lennon and Paul McCartney's songs, did they need money? I guess not. But yeah, but they not. sold hundreds of millions of dollars. They sold that catalog to Michael Jackson. So maybe they didn't put the songs in commercials, but they sold them for hundreds of millions of dollars. That's not selling out. But rich people don't need money, but they will always sell something. They'll always make well, money. Well, again, you know, Paul McCartney could have kept the rights and said, these are mine. Yeah. Mine. Yeah. He I did. created them and they're mine. And no one's going to ever use them because I have principles. But he didn't. Paul McCartney yeah. has castles in Scotland and he got married again uh, The Stumpy or whatever her name is. I mean, did you, did, <laughs> I mean the guy... Uh, the guy just keeps going. He's got millions and millions and millions of dollars. I guess no one ever thinks they've got enough money, do they? Well, they'll always sell whatever they've got to sell. That is what everybody does, sweetheart. Tom. like a show? 1-800-5800-TOM. Here's our telephone number. Bryce on the Tom Likas show. Hey, Tom. How you doing, man? Okay, Bryce. Uh, first of all, I was about two seconds away from killing myself if you didn't get that lady off the line. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, here's the deal, man. That term selling out came from black people back in the early 80s. It, was, it, it started with just pure jealousy for the success of other people. It's, and then it went to a, uh, a rap artist by the name of MC Light in 1982, and then LL Cool J in 86. And then they really used that term heavily with Vanilla Ice. When he sold to uh, Vanilla Ice and uh, what's that guy, rapper, hammer guy, when he did that uh, Taco Bell commercial with the parachuting pants. MC Hammer, yeah. Yeah, so it's a, it's, a, it's a term that was generated by black people, but trip this now, they're using it 
to make money. Well, actually, you know, the, the term predates the 80s. Uh, uh, there was an album in the 60s called The Who Sell Out, or The, the Who Sell Out. Oh, well, yeah, that's... that's and and selling out, that term selling out existed way before the 80s. And, and by the way, was a reference to the very same thing. Uh, if, they, if you ever saw this old uh, CD by The Who... Uh -huh. uh, or the old uh, album cover. Uh, there was a picture of Roger Daltrey uh, pictured in a can of uh, Heinz uh, vegetarian beans. Tom. Like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. The only thing God did, he screwed up with a woman, gave her a brain. <laughs> are, you, are, you, are you suggesting on a woman a brain is like tonsils? They don't really do anything? You can have them removed? Yeah. The Tom Like It Show. Tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.